started with the panel guys thank you all very much for joining thank you very much for coming i'm gonna do a uh thank you i'm gonna do a quick i mostly want this to be a questions and answers i kind of want to focus on the things that you folks might want to talk about or address things that have happened with assist me or the shows just go ham just go nuts later on but for about 10 minutes i kind of wanted to talk about the uh, the biggest questions that i get um about the channel and about the stuff and about the live streams and about benny and like just about the entire thing that's happened over the past, like, insane, which has been three years of my life that I just can't even tell you how ridiculously amazing it's been. Um, and the big one is that, Max, how, the, how did you get into fighting games? Like, I see this one an awful lot, and I almost think that it's a weird answer because a lot of dudes got it in 2009, right? There's, there's a huge resurgence of folks that love fighting games, and Street Fighter Four was the one to just bring them in, and it's just like, there's competitive elements, there's, there's Daigo, there's Tokido, there's this rivalry from East Coast to West Coast, Japan to America, and all that became really interesting and is the birthplace of things like this. But all I knew of it was, in the middle of Southern California, there were these dudes that really loved Third Strike. Like, there were these guys that always huddled at this place called Family Fun Arcade, provide amazing commentary, and essentially was the birthplace of competitive 3S for a long time. And that's what I knew from, geez, like 2002, all the way up until SF4 came out. So when a lot of people ask me, like, when did you get into fighting games? They'd been there my whole life. Like, Street Fighter Two. there's a picture of me as, like, a little kid just up at an arcade machine, just mashing on Blanca Ball, just, yeah, let's go. And I still cherish, cherish the crap out of that picture because it's like, oh, yeah, I have been doing this for a really long time. Um, but when it comes to getting into fighting games, I don't think you need a specific, like, reason. It's just if you care. Like, that's the most important part is that a lot of guys get into this stuff, and a lot of folks ask me, and it's obvious that they're, like, they look at YouTube or they look at Twitch and they see this stuff and they're like, I can have a big, bright future with this. And if I get into fighting games or if I get into Call of Duty or something like that and they immediately start focusing on things to expand their career. And I'm like, that was never, ever the focus. If I wanted to be like a big YouTuber, I'd be playing League of Legends all day long. I'd be playing Call of Duty all day long. And I told him like, well, what do you care about? Like, what do you really care about? Like, what do you want to do? What do you, what, what games give you, like, make you feel all good inside, like, when something cool happens? And that's the best way I can actually describe what you want to get into, is just kind of, like, have a passion for something. Because that translates. Once you actually see somebody else that enjoys the same thing you do, it's like, I could talk to you for, like, 30, 40 minutes. This is insane. And you guys probably realize this when I'm walking around. I end up getting into conversations with dudes just about like-minded stuff. Like, Zero is so broken in Marvel. We're going to talk about this for 40 minutes. Um... And it just, it's just natural. So the, the, the nice thing is that once I started getting into this stuff and I wanted to actually up like production quality and make things look a little better, make things sound a little better, I had no experience at all. I literally just had to start teaching myself the ropes of what I need to do to make my stuff not look like an internet video. Because that was back in 2011. Like most of YouTube was kind of kind of garbage back in 2011. Even myself included. I go back and look at season one of System and I'm like, ugh. Whoa, I look like that? Damn, this is bad. And I, I kind of like analyze what, what I did early and what I did later and pretty much come to the assumption that as long as you really care, you'll put as much passion into it as you care about the games themselves. And even though nowadays there's a lot of other games around, like uh, there's Street Fighter 4, there's Marvel, there's Injustice, and I've covered all these games a bit, but if any of you guys watch my channel, you know that the games I play the most more than any 
is like Third Strike and Marvel vs. Capcom 1. Those games have been dead for 10 to 20, 10 years, I can't say 20 years. They've been gone for a long time. Um, and I can't stop playing them because I love the hell out of them. And I only hope I get to show people how much I love that stuff. And now there's actually dudes that just stay on the channel for Third Strike stuff just because they enjoy just watching parrying the crap out of things and me being an idiot and jumping in on Shoryuken, so just parrying the whole Shoryuken. I just, I found that to be the most fun. The stuff that I genuinely cared about. And as long as I didn't force myself, like, I didn't force myself to play Injustice. I generally, I genuinely did want to play Injustice. And I found that game to be a ton of fun over the six months I did. And it's with a lot of other fighting games, I like giving them a chance. A lot of questions are, why don't you play Persona 4 Arena anymore? What the heck happened to uh, Soul Calibur 5? And I feel with a lot of these games, they're good. They're, they're awesome. They're extremely good. Persona's got some of the best netcode out there. Soul Calibur 5 is some of the, the best, like, in terms of online components and structure. You get this lobby where you get to fight people. It's awesome. That's never been done before, especially by, like, Japanese developers. And even though that stuff is really cool, I was still like, Soul Calibur 2 HD's coming out, though. That game. Like, that game. Turns out it was horrible online, and it was pretty poorly implemented, which is why you stopped seeing me cover it on the channel. Um, I felt extremely burned out on by that. But it was just, when I try to give time to a game, and I want people to know that this stuff exists, instead of just playing Third Strike all the time, or Marvel Origins on the line, or Ultimate Marvel 3, I, I kind of want everyone to see that there's something else out there. And I kind of really wanted to start that up with the Kickstarter games, because there's a lot of Kickstarter fighting games that have genuinely cool looks to them. I mean, what's the, f okay, just going to ask all of you personally, when you look at a fighting game, what's the first thing you see? Do you see the characters, do you see the graphics, or do you see the combat? Characters? Okay, exactly. I'm either going to hear characters or graphics, because that's the only thing you can tell. Like, you can go into deep analysis and see, like, this has got hits done here, there's, there's block effect going on here, and make all the analysis like I do in, like, trailer breakdowns. But that's all fluff, because when you see Marvel versus Capcom and Ryu's going, hot dog, yeah, let's go. I don't even care what else is in this game. I'm going to play the crap out of that. It's so important, and when I see fighting games that actually have this really cool visual appeal, that makes me excited. And I think that trying to look, go out and see these guys, like there was one, for example, that I got mentioned to that was too late on Kickstarter. Who saw the um, like SNK like Neo Geo Fighters on, there was like a, a very handheld version on a Neo Geo Pocket back in the day, which was Capcom versus SNK. Little, little characters, but it played fantastic. Characters were like 16 sprites tall. It was like a, practically a Game Boy, but the gameplay was great. And there were these dudes on Kickstarter, I had no idea, that were resurrecting that style of game. An old classic game, redesigning the characters so they don't look just like Mai, they don't look just like Kyo or Ryu, and they were gonna remake the whole thing. And they were like $1,000 short on Kickstarter. I'm like, I could have saved you, no! It would have been so cool! And, and I felt really bad after that point. And I wanted to do whatever I could to kind of help out these indie developers. Because if they're like short by a small amount to make their small project fighting game something that would have been really cool, I felt really bad. So I, I kind of started doing things for new Kickstarter games. I try to focus on the games that are out there that now that I have a, a decent following, like not in comparison to crazy League of Legends followings, I feel like for fighting games, a, a big enough following that we can show people that there's a lot of crazy stuff out here, and it does, doesn't have to be selected to NetherRealm and Capcom and Namco. Like, there's a wonderful amount of fighting games out there, and they're all freaking awesome. It's just that which way are your eyes going to go when something comes out? Which one do you want to see? And I just want to play more. Because I found that if I just play more fighting games, I'm much happier than sticking just to Marvel. And you guys probably remember, like, it was nothing but Marvel videos for a good six months at one point. And I was just like, man, I, I like this game, but I'm getting sick of it. It's just, I need something different. And then Third Strike came out and everything, and it's just a lot more fun. So all I'm saying is that for everyone here, if you want to get into videos especially, if you want to start doing YouTube, if you want to start doing whatever, put as much production value and as much effort into it as, as you like the game. Because if there's something that you see that you can improve on, there's something that you can change the audio on and make your presentation a little bit better, then do it. Just, just go ahead and do it. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the first videos I did where I was actually talking. How's it going, everyone? My name's Maximilian. I, uh, I do sure you can right here, and you'll be fine. And that was it. That was like, it was horrible. I didn't even know how to talk. I didn't know what I was doing. But I wanted to try something. I just wanted to do something for the community that I actually felt a lot about. And 
through that process, you learn. You just, you learn. I mean, I, I can go back and tell you, like, all those old videos, I'm hell of embarrassed by now. I can't delete them, though, because people still like them. But they show a progression that you can at least follow, that once you get to a certain point, you can actually eloquently tell people why you like fighting games so much and have something cool visually in the background to assist you. So um, that's my little bit of advice. I, uh, I thank you guys very much for, for showing up for this and listening to my little speech. And this, oh, I, one thing I'm almost going to forget. If you're worried that you might not have the technical know-how in a fighting game, but you really think Ryu is cool or you really think fighting games are awesome, don't let that hinder you. Like, if, you're, if you want to be creative about something, just, just do it. Like, I haven't won a major, so I can't make a breakdown video of Ryu. Damn it! Like, it's just, it doesn't exist that, it doesn't work that way. Just do it. Um, people, the majority of people aren't going to care if you've won so many tournaments with Ryu. If you have something creative and you want to show off the history of a character, or do something really neat in a video that represents fighting games, just do it. And as long as you're passionate about it and you care, people are going to be like, oh, this is cool. This guy, this guy gives, a, a, gives a shit as much as I do about something. I'm going to subscribe and follow him, and I think that's the only reason I actually have a following to this day. So if you, if you guys have any questions about anything regarding, like I said, Benny, production, behind the scenes, anything like that, I'll totally take Q&A for um, the duration. And right now, I, uh, I was going to say something else. Um, yeah, we'll just take QA for the duration. Uh, it'll come back to me. I was going to mention one more thing. But if any of you guys have questions, do we have a, uh, a QA mic? Okay, there's a QA mic over here. Uh, if any of you guys want to talk about anything regarding the show, Benny, assist me, working with the different game companies I've worked with in the past, uh, go ahead, and I'm all yours. Okay, the mic is about... Oops, sorry. What's up, guys? The mic's right here, honey. So, I... Uh I was wondering, as far as uh, video capture for uh, games, right. do you have any uh, good entry-level options you're aware of that don't require you to have your console right next to your computer? Um, the best way to alleviate that is honestly to buy a uh, USB extension cable. Uh, if you don't want it right next to your computer, buy like a cheap $4 extension cable. And that's what I've done because my capture devices are like over there and my TV is over there in some situations. Uh, and especially for streaming, you want access to everything really quick. And an extension cable for the capture device to the computer is really good. But if you just want entry-level devices, uh, like I started with an HD PVR. Who had an HD PVR? Does anyone know what that is? Like the hop hog thing? Came out, yeah, exactly. Came out back in like 2008 or something like that. Just 720p raw. I don't even know if it did 60 FPS. It might have. I used that pretty much forever. Uh, up until like only a year ago when I just wanted to get into more, uh, more capture options. And uh, that worked really well, and that one has just a USB cable on it. And if, it, if you need it to go longer, just buying an extension cable was the easiest way. A lot of times with capture, it's like you're trying to think of the most complicated thing you can possibly do to fix what's going on. And you're like, wait a minute, the easiest solution is just to get an extension cable. Why don't I just get an extension cable? And that really just fixed the issue for me on a lot of things like that. But I had the same problem you did. Thanks, guys. No one else have any questions? I, just wanted, to, I wanted to add something. My husband, yeah. my husband, I wanted to say something. You don't need to talk. My husband has went blind legally four years ago. Wow, okay. He went blind legally four years ago, and you've, you've actually made him very happy. Thank you. No, no, seriously, guys, that's okay. Thank you. And you, you've really enhanced his life, so thank you. Ser that's, it's totally okay, guys. Thank you very much. The fact that I can actually help people out by just screaming into a microphone and being ridiculously hype about a parry, that, that, means, that means a lot to me. Thank you very much. What's up, dude? Uh, I, I, wanted to have a, uh, I wanted to ask you about, like, favorites. Okay. Like, yeah. one, thing that, uh, one thing that I have is, like, guilty pleasures. Okay. Like, one thing that I always – I love uh, Street Fighter, the movie, the arcade game. I always have to specify the All arcade right. game. All right. But Because everybody says, like – Street Fighter movie, the game that that's terrible. Yeah. What what game out there that that you love that everybody else hates? Oh, that's tough. I know that's a tough one. I mean, I I was almost gonna say what game out there do you love that is admittedly crap? And I'm like <laughs> the original Killer Instinct. <laughs> game is 
awesome. I love the hell out of it, but you play it now and it's just total crap. Um, but in terms of games that aren't exactly popular, there was this game called Rumblefish on PlayStation 2. And not <laughs> barely any of you guys are going to know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> I think it was made by CyberConnect2 or um, aiding. CyberConnect2 is the guys that made Street Fighter 4. Aiding is the guys that made Marvel 3. And uh, this development studio was just making fighting games early on in their development. That wasn't even a Capcom game. It was a very SNK-ish style game. And this game was at my local arcade, the Japanese version. And I was the only one that ever played it. <laughs> like, I was like, this game's really cool. Guys, guys, stop playing Third Strike. Get over here. And I just, I just found a lot of fun out of it. I think you can import it for PS2. Huh. But um, <laughs> that's, that's a weird one. Like, that's a ja Japanese only. Uh, I can't really think of anything else. Okay. The thing, the kind of sh shitty thing about me is that I, the mainstream games, I'm like, yeah, it's a mainstream game. We've got to pay attention to it. <laughs> this is why I, I kind of broke that mentality of myself and wanted to focus on some of the Kickstarter games, you know? Some of the games that don't get enough attention and these dudes are trying really hard. Because I'm not like, it's not like they're coming up to me, Max, we're going to write you $100 for every time you say Chainsaw, chainsaw Incident or every 100 <laughs> times you say Beast Fury. No, it's not like that. It's like, I see what these guys are doing. They come up to me and they're like, we're trying really hard to get this off the ground. Do you mind helping us? I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, send me a build, and I'll see, I'll see what I can tell you about hit stun and block stun, if things feel good and stuff like that. And I'll make a video for you. And if things work out eventually and you'd like to have me be a voice in the game, cool. I, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. But for now, let's just, let's just see if we can get your project going. Um, because I've been in that situation before where you're trying really hard to just, with your own resources, to get something going, and it's called Assist Me. <laughs> 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 that is, it's tough to get started. So... Um, yeah, I, I understand, and I'm, I'm kind of down for questions like which fighting games that aren't mainstream <laughs> are the ones you like, so thank you for that. Right, thank thank you. you. Hey, Max. What's up, dude? Um, I wanted to ask you a little more about the channel, okay. about the kind of things you're covering. So I really started getting into fighting games about like three or four years ago, and it's through watching you that I've learned a lot of you know aspects and kind of techniques. Okay. But what I've noticed and had difficulty of you know, in my transition and you know, from being a noob to the now more intermediate levels is that there is a large lack of explanation on certain aspects of fighting games. Like right. Canceling. Like basic stuff, like, yeah, like, like two mix, and one and yeah. canceling, yeah. Like, I, like frame traps, for example, yeah. was something that was immensely difficult to even try to not only understand conceptually, yeah. but also find information about. Yeah. And even though people use it and... Talk about it like it's talk normal about it. thing. And I see you do it. You know, like yeah. there are things... There are mix-ups that you'll do that only now I understand. Yeah, why you but do it, them. it took a long time to get to but that point I to had, see it. I needed to know what it was, how it was, to even know that you were doing it. Because yeah. before it was like, oh, you were jumping and kicking, but I didn't know that that was actually a tool exactly. specifically for something. So I want to know if that was something that you were considering or thinking about doing more in your coverage. That's a fantastic question because some of you might remember a single video I did back for the day. Um, I actually did this for like a Machinima launching channel called Machinima Versus. And I wanted to introduce people to fighting games. And it was called Fighting Games for Beginners. And it was only one video in the series, however, because I just didn't like the format very much. Um, and the Machinima guys wanted to make videos way too fast. I'm like, guys, I can't make videos that quick. Like, <laughs> sorry. Um, the, the video just focused on canceling, like two and one, like low forward firefall. Um, like the, the act of doing that is pretty alien to a very large majority of people. Like I know, for example, like my friend Matt, like from Yo Video Games, yeah. no idea what a two and one is. He, he understands like the basics and fundamentals of Smash Brothers and fighting games and all this stuff. But when it comes to actually f actually doing a low forward into Fireball, he doesn't get the cancel window. And I started asking like a lot of other friends that have been around Street Fighter for a while. I'm like, do low forward into Fireball. I just it wasn't like, you know, do low forward into Fireball to see how good you are. No, I just wanted to know. <laughs> I just wanted to know how many people actually understand this concept of two and one or canceling something. And guess what they all did? Low forward, got back up, Fireball. And I'm like, try to match the fireball where you're doing the low forward. Like, okay. And then you just go nuts on it. And eventually it comes out, they're like, oh, you could do that? I'm like, wow, okay. So this is actually not just a thing that dudes in competitive environments completely understand. It's something that might be completely alien to a lot of people. And that's where fighting games for beginners essentially started. The thing is, I, I found that to be kind of like, if I just focus on talking about cancels for four minutes, I think it was pretty boring. Oh. So what I wanted to do, and this has been an idea brewing in my head for a long time, a fighting game series that's, until I find a better title, that's called How to Play. And literally, it'd be How to Play Ultimate Marvel 3. It'd be six minutes dedicated to telling you what Ultimate Marvel 3 is about, how you follow assists, what the assist buttons are, 
and really quickly establish what the game is, how you play it. Same thing for Street Fighter 4. Tell people about spacing, tell people about canceling, two and one special cancels, and everything like that. Essentially, it gets into like mechanics, part one. Part two is, uh, part two is how the game is essentially played in neutral. And then part three is advanced stuff. Because if you tell somebody, like, the neutral game, like, what the hell are you talking about, neutral game? Like, what does that even mean? Uh, and now that, that term has only become really popular in the FGC over the past year. So I would do something to explain to people, what do you do? Like, if you're Akuma and you're just chilling out, what do you even do as this character in Street Fighter Four? And it starts to establish, well, you have to command your space. Forward roundhouse is really good. You have to jump up with fireballs. If you keep doing that, you're going to get far, pretty far and until it gets to a point where you have to get to the advanced stuff. So that's where I want to take it, you know? I want to take the stuff that, that you suggested, the stuff that I've done before, and actually just put it all into game segments. And I'd get dudes that are extremely good at, like, KOF 13 over and have them explain to me specifically the advanced stuff of KOF 13 so I understand, because obviously I haven't played a lot of KOF 13, not even for a good reason either. Like, <laughs> that game's beautiful, and for some reason I just haven't played a lot of it. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be a much more like interesting video series. Do you guys think so? Like how to play a specific fighting game, and it's like big and edited and funny, hopefully. Um, <laughs> yeah, because when I was learning games and stuff, one very difficult part for me, especially like even you know with a big popular game like Street Fighter Four, yeah, canceling and timing is oh, yeah. immensely difficult. And the <clears> only the only one time is when I finally, it kind of clicked in my head when I realized you can only cancel on hit. And you, you can only cancel, cancel on specific moves. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's a lot of little things and to And you canceling. can't cancel on recovery. And then in other games, you can. Yes. So that little nugget of information was like, now I can finally play the game. Yeah, it's like totally different. Because now I know when I can cancel. I mean, Sans Virgil in Marvel 3, like, almost every character in Marvel 3 can cancel with attacks. Like, they yeah. can just throw out a heavy attack and do a fireball without blocking at all. So I could see how that's really easy to get confused because you think that might be a universal mechanic. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's totally different in Street Fighter or it's totally different different in Killer Instinct or Third Strike or whatever. So I, I think the, the more we talk about this, the more I'm like, yeah, this series of videos would be a really good idea. <laughs> um, and it would also be fun. I mean, just tackling the modern games as well as the old games, like and how to play Third Strike would be really damn cool. Um, how to play Alpha 2, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Of course, I get excited about the old stuff. But, uh, but I think having that available, especially maybe when a fighting game comes out, might be really yeah, beneficial. new fighting games, especially just because since everybody's getting off the ground for the first yeah. time, it's like, all right, we have all of these games that we know how to play, know how they played. How yeah. do they compare to this new? Exactly. Right, what can you tran what skills can you transfer over? What are similarities and what are things that just don't work that you can't transfer over? You pretty much nailed it on the head. That's the exact stuff I would cover in the video. All but right, um, well. yeah, thanks very much, dude. That's that's a really good suggestion. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. No You're problem. Great. Uh, it actually reminded me of something before we get to the next guy. How many people um, how many people realize how important it is to start playing a fighting game within the first week of it coming out? Like, a, a lot of you guys might, and a lot of people just think that they can just jump into a fighting game at any point and start kicking ass. And it doesn't work that way. You have a lot of folks that really want to be good at this stuff really quick. And I need to maybe make a video about that, the importance, and this was actually suggested to me by, like, um, somebody on the Facebook fan page, the importance of playing a fighting game in the first week. Like, it's if you want to try to be decent at anything, or any specific fighting game, I mean, Play it within the first week and learn with the people around you because not only do you have a chance of winning and not hating the game because you're losing all the time, you also have a chance of learning how these strategies are evolving because you're seeing people do stuff in front of you. And you can also steal what people are doing. Like, that's the most, that's the most beautiful thing about fighting games is just stealing all the tech. Like, anytime somebody does something cool, I'm doing that now. It's compo completely mine. I'm just going to X copy everything you do and I'm gonna completely make it my own now. And you don't claim it as your own, of course, but you can learn just by watching somebody. And I think that's an awesome thing about fighting games. So anyway, done with my rant. Go ahead, dude. Uh, what are the chances you'll ever play Blaze Blue with your live stream? Which game? Blaze Blue with your live stream. Okay, Blaze Blue. <coughs> I wanted to make some videos on Blaze Blue. Um, and I was going to do it around the thing that I might have found the most interesting that I really wanted to play. Because specifically the Blaze Blue, I know, it's an, I know it's an evolution of the Guilty Gear series. I absolutely know that. Like Ragnas, like Saul, and everything like that. It's just I found the way they looked in Blaze Blue not that interesting. And to me, the most captivating thing about fighting game is finding a character you love and being really awesome with that character, make, making them look freaking cool. Uh, and I just couldn't, I didn't feel that way about anybody in Blaze Blue, sadly. But there was, there was a moment when the new... Uh, 
It's called Chrono Phantasma. Yeah. Yeah. When the new one came out, I was I was like, okay, well, I I I see that all these dudes really want me to cover Blaze Blue because I know it's like in terms of anime fighters, pretty much the most popular one. I'm gonna put something up on the channel. I'm gonna go through the story mode of this game and all of its anime ridiculousness. Just like have fun with it and just enjoy the heck out of it. And then immediately, some dude's like, no, your your channel will totally get taken down if you do that. I'm like, what? Are you? What? No, he's like, yeah, Axis totally bans the crap out of people if you put up anything regarding their story mode in games. I'm like, really, guys? Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna make an effort to go to E3 and contact them directly and see if they can't personally get a a lift on my channel, me, get me on the white list, so that I can cover their games without fear of things bad happening to the channel. Because I don't know if you guys know, if I put up three Blaze Blue videos in a week. And some person at Axis or Axis finds me, and they're like, "This dude put up videos of our in-game stuff. We gotta take him down. My channel is gone. Like, it's not even like it's not even like, oh, it's gone for a week. No, it's gone. Like that YouTube just doesn't care. Uh, so I have to be really careful about that stuff I put up. And luckily, Machinima helps out with crazy things that might happen. But as soon as I heard that, I was like, Ugh, guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> but like I said, because I see still get a lot of requests." I'm actually going to contact them at E3, see if I can get a hold of their PR person and do my best. Right. But thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Max. What's up, dude? Now, my question is concerning Assist Me. Okay. Um, what exactly went into your decision of covering the characters that you covered, and will you be retiring the Doom character once you're finished with the series? Ooh. Ooh. Um... No, Doom. Doom is not going to be reti retired. Uh, I think I think the Doom character I would just like to have around at a lot of times. And even though I know you guys haven't seen a lot of Assist Me, um, the the biggest thing that went into the contributing factor of figuring out what character to do when was literally convenience. Like, do I know this character? How fast can I figure this? Can I get somebody to help me out with this character? Or how much do we have somebody that we know that looks like this character? Uh, that's the most important part. Like I was, I was more focused around getting somebody that can decently portray Phoenix, or decently portray X-23, or Chris, or something like that before anything else. And once we establish that, making a like basic to mid-level tutorial for Marvel isn't that hard. Like you guys go to tournaments and you can watch what exactly is going on to get a basic understanding. The most important thing I think I started doing, especially with Dante, is I started talking about, like I said before, the neutral game. Yeah. Like what you do with Dante. Like Generally with Dante, you can kind of jump up and do fireball medium punch to get like the reverb shock like oh, yeah. thing. And you're generally okay doing yeah, that at any time. Yeah, I know one thing I noticed about that Dante tutorial is I saw a lot of people giving you crap for uh, you saying the lock on the lock on thing with Dante was good in the neutral or something. Not the acid rain, but the thing before it. The lock on? It, yeah. I don't know if I said it was good in neutral. It's good on incoming, oh, right? Uh, <laughs> I it's okay. Really it's okay. I mean, like there was a lot of dudes so I made this 18 minute long tutorial and there were dudes like, in this three seconds, you said this move was slightly better than I think it is, you piece of shit. <laughs> there was 17 pages on game facts and I'm like, I got two pages and I'm like, nope. Then I just clicked off of that. Oh, I'm yeah. like, if that was that important, dude, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that lock on isn't as good. It's so fine. I'm sure I'm sure you came across it too. Yeah, I'm, I'm I use game facts all the time, and I don't yeah. really care what they have to say about you. Yeah, I just I at that at that point I was like, this guy is not a Dante pro. How dare he make videos? That Maximilian guy, that piece of shit. Um, yeah, I, I get that a lot. Then that's one thing that I'll also I'd like to talk about is in general when you guys start making videos, and you and if anybody in here has the chance to do stuff like I did, like I was exactly like you guys like three or four years ago, and just, just looking at people making stuff, and they decided, I'm going to make stuff myself. I'm just going to do it. And through that process, you will always get people that don't like what you do. You could be the dude that made, that like cured polio, and some guy's like, I hate that guy's face. Curing polio, what did he do? You will always get that. It's the internet. There's no way you can avoid it. And the bigger your audience might get, the more people you're going to get let, that just despise what you do, that just don't like anything you do, regardless if it's helping out new people. That guy's helping out scrubs. We don't need more scrubs in the F I've heard that so many times. So the ignore it. They, it does nothing for you. All they're there to do is just ruin everything about you. And to be honest, a lot of the times when I see comment sections and it's just people just going off on regards to Dante's lock-on not working, I'm like, you know what? Useless. Too much, too much of my energy within the first three years of me making these videos 
went into reading negative comments, and I just was hating what I was doing. I, at one point, I didn't want to make Marvel videos because all the Marvel players were like, Max sucks at online. He can't land Doom Infinites? Who can't land a Doom Infinite now? And I'm like, this is getting rough, dude. <laughs> this is getting rough. I'm going to go play some Third Strike. Oh, my God. So you can't let yourself get discouraged um, because the, the piece of advice I have to tell myself every time I read something front page on SRK or Event Hubs about any of my videos is that you're going to keep doing what you do longer than these people can hate. And eventually they're going to go away and you're still going to be there and there's going to be more people around liking what you do. Just follow that. Thank you. No, thank you, really. Um, I'd say that's general for anything. If any of you guys are creators on the internet, just keep doing what you're doing they're going to go away and you keep doing what you do. So thanks very much, dude. Yeah, no problem. What's up, dude? What's up? Um, uh, my question is basically for uh, future content. It's like uh, okay. basically what, uh, when will you ever do like more uh, anime fighting and uh, what is your take on anime, anime fighters? <clears throat> so the, the biggest time I was into anime fighters was around uh, 2002 to 2005. Um, and that's because Guilty Gear was the resurgence of that game. Like, when Guilty Gear came out, there was nothing that looked like it before. It looked like an anime. Uh, and it was awesome. Like, at, when I remember playing that game in arcades, like, nonstop. And my only biggest issue with um, anime fighters in general is that I hate to say it, but I've kind of grown out of anime. And I'm not even going to say, like, I'm an adult. I've grown out of anime. I don't <laughs> like it anymore. No, dude. I, I loved it. And I can't even tell you guys how much I loved anime when I was, like, 18 to 25 years old. Loved it. I still think Cowboy Bebop is one of the greatest things on the planet. I still think Akira and um, Akira, Blade of the Mor Blade of the Immortal books, uh, Ninja Scroll, like all these things, the Ghost in the Shell original movie. They, I love the hell out of them. I can't get them out of my head. So, when it comes to anime games nowadays, because I don't have that that illustrious like love for everything anime, when I see Aquapaza, I'm like. I, I just I, I see something like Arcana Heart, and I'm just like, Ugh. yeah, it's like basically it's all, waifu it, fighter at that. Yeah, point. exactly. It's just all little girls beating each other up, and I'm like, I think Guilty Gear is better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's not that those games are bad. I I know that like I, I personally know that Arcana Heart is probably one of the most fun fighting games you can play, um, because I've played it, and I just I didn't continue playing it because there was nothing for me with characters there. Like I said, you, I kind of need a character to be like. I am sticking with Ken, and I'm going the whole way. I am sticking with Siegfried, I'm going the whole way. Mitsurugi is amazing in this game, going the whole way. I just didn't feel that for anybody. And uh, that doesn't mean I want to stop that. Like, I might have... I downloaded a game that was made by an ex-Capcom employee recently, and I've wanted to cover it, and then something made me stop. So this game is called Vanguard Princess, and I'd seen screenshots of it since for, like, ever, and I'm like, this looks like a really crazy game. So I downloaded it, and then I started playing, and I'm like, whoa, this is pretty risky. Like, and then I looked into it more. It's a freaking hentai game. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I can't put this on the channel. And it wasn't even that there was anything, like, really graphic. I mean, there was some graphic stuff just because they're, they're barely wearing any clothes. It was just that I didn't want to risk it, so we'll see. Like, I just might make it a joke, and I put sensor bars, like, all over there, like, <laughs> mostly naked bodies. And it's just like, all right, I see what we're playing here. Um... And that game's actually got a lot of high-quality stuff. Like, that game looks really good in terms of the backgrounds and the character art. And there was just, like, one dude that made it. And I think that's an interesting story to tell. So, I, I don't know. I really do want to do a series of videos. Um, I always talk about things I want to start up, and it just the hardest thing is getting them started. Where you discover a fighting game. For, like, the first time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discover what Aquapaza is like and just play it. And just do a quick breakdown of what it's like and who might like it. And... I think that might be the best way to do it. I'm not going to go online and play people for six weeks and make 30 episodes of The Online Warrior, maybe. <laughs> but at least we can establish that it exists and right. have it be on a, a game that's a channel that's mostly centric around fighting games now. So I hear you guys. Like, all you anime dudes that are like, come on, Max, please help us out. Because we're like these games are really cool. And it's like, I know. I just got to just gotta find a way to make it, make it cool for everybody else, too. <laughs> and I think that might be the best way, too, for, like, discovering Aquapasa, discovering... Uh, Vanguard Princess, you know, and it's just a single episode, and we just do it like that, and maybe later on we do a week of of it or something like that. So, but thanks, dude. Thanks very right. much. Thanks, and uh, thank you for <coughs> noticing me, senpai. Oh yeah, <laughs> that happens a lot in the stream nowadays. Max, notice me, senpai. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> What's a senpai? <laughs> What's up, dude? How you doing, man? Uh, this is an, uh, a question about the technical aspects of your show with your equipment and whatnot. Absolutely, yeah. You said that you started out just kind of 
off your own kind of stuff with average, below average equipment. Yeah. I was wondering what went into the process of, you know, researching and looking for what equipment works well for you in that's, terms of That's an amazing question. Um, so the first thing where things started looking, I, this was a long time ago, we're talking like February 2011, where okay. things finally started looking decent on my channel, besides me talking over a Street Fighter video or something like that, was Assist Me. Like, assist me, I will acknowledge today, this looks good. It's horribly acted and performed, and the tutorial is total crap, but it looks good. And that was the first time I wanted to take something like that seriously. Um, but before that, I was, like, shooting Benny jokes with, like, a really crappy digital camera um, below 720p, you know? And when I wanted to make that jump, I'm like, I want this to look professional. Like, I want people to see, like, wow, why does this look like a TV show? And to do this, I started doing a little bit of research. I had a friend who worked in a film school at the time. I'm like, okay, what can we do to make this look amazing? He's like, well, you need to get a DSLR. What does that stand for? It's a camera. I'm like, okay, all right, I got you, bro. We need to get a camera. Um, so I eventually found a, a place in Burbank in Los Angeles uh, that rents out camera equipment. And I put a $1,200 deposit on equipment that would have ultimately cost $6,000 if I busted it. Uh, for camera equipment, lighting, and sound equipment. So we had like like wireless mics. We had um, we had a DSLR camera, and we had a couple of lenses for that DSLR camera to have like you know you're in focus and nothing is in focus right, behind right. you. You know, super cinematic feel. And um, the sad part about this is that that stuff was expensive. Um, just the rental costs alone ended up being nine hundred dollars. But that was back in the day. That was like 2011 when DSLRs were really expensive and everything. You can get a DSLR camera for like less than 500, like out the door with a decent lens now. Um, but that's the first jump I made, just to upgrade the camera, make sure we can hear what we're all saying. And then after that was learning how to edit it all together, like figuring out how do I edit live action scenes together and not just video game footage? And how do I make myself not sound like an idiot or not have sound, not have doom sound like he's like 900 decibels louder than me. And um, the best program for that I found is Sony Vegas. Um, if any of you guys do editing, Sony Vegas lets you audio edit. That's what like, I use uh, as, uh, 11. Exactly. Edit your audio along with the video, sync it up, and you can do it all in one program. That's why I like Vegas a lot. Um, so I do a lot of audio editing on the show and you balance the audio out. That was the big time I made the jump was essentially a DSLR camera. Um, get some advice on somebody that knows what they're doing because you're going to get this camera and it's got buttons and focus racks and ISOs and I'm like, I don't know what the hell is going on. What's a white balance? Uh, and you just learn. You just learn over time. If, if you really want to get into it, just keep futzing around with it. You know, just eventually, eventually you get the hang of it. And my recommendation is to upgrade the camera and the audio equipment and try not to spend too much money. Right. Like, don't be like me. Like, I had no money after this happened and it was ridiculous. And I was like, well, at least it looks good. <laughs> I got what I wanted, but um, but yeah, that'd be my recommendation. Thanks, man. Thank you. What's up? Hi. Um. So this is a Benny question. Yes. Did you bring him with you? And I am so sorry we didn't bring him with no? us. Um. So <laughs> we've never taken Benny on a plane before, huh. and I'm really about I'm really nervous about sticking Benny in a cage. <laughs> With a, with a room on a plane that's shaking very violently with a bunch of other caged dogs. Uh, I kind of put myself in Benny's shoes way too much, and I'm like, that would suck. How about we take him to, his, to, to our, 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 my, my wife's parents' place and have him just be there for a little while? And I, I was almost going to get a shirt made that has a picture of Benny, and it says, I'm sorry I'm not here. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm back at home. And I, I really wanted to do that, but... Um, if I go to more events, I try my best to bring Benny out. The sad thing is that Evo this year, we brought Benny to the last two, two Evos, I think. And um, it's been awesome. There's this line. I'm, like, sitting next to Benny. I'm, like, talking to people. And there's this line of 30 dudes just waiting to pet Benny <laughs> and take pictures. I'm like, that is way better than people waiting for me. Like, that is infinitely better than people wanting to talk to me at all. So the, we wanted to bring him to Evo this year. And sadly, the convention center is no pets. <laughs> Like, nothing. You can't bring him in at all. So it's, it's going to be kind of a bummer at Evo and this one where I can't bring Benny. But um, my apologies. It actually inspires me to make a video. Like, I'm sorry, everyone. I could not make it to Chicago. Those evil humans were going to shove me into a plane, you know, and actually bring back. Who likes the Benny voice, by the way? Who saw, like, the Benny April Fool's video? <laughs> is, is the Benny voice annoying for you guys? Do you think it was pretty entertaining? 
Okay, we got some plans then for Benny being in more stuff very soon. Do you like but, uh, how he's getting really popular now? Like, he's, he might be in the video game that you were talking about, that fighter. I saw yeah, that. so yeah, that's yeah. a great example. Like, Beast Fury, the guys, um, I've been kind of, like, helping out with that game for a little while. Like, they've been sending me a build, and I've been checking it out. And then uh, they were starting up their new, their new Kickstarter to get more characters into the game. And I'm just like, cool, uh, I'll help you guys out because I've helped you out before, and I'll just make a video. And they're like, we really want to put Benny into it. I'm like, really? Like, you want to make Benny an actual character into the game? They're like, yeah, is that okay with you? I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, yes, I will make a video right now about it. And I was ridiculously excited and even more excited because the next day, that, that drawing that came up with, like, Benny and his yeah. glasses and his gloves, they did that in a day. And I was like, oh, okay, you guys are clearly serious about this. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So I hope, I hope it happens. That would be pretty much the most magical thing that's the product of anything I've done is that I made Benny into a fighting game character. Like, that'd be really cool, but... Shout-outs to Benny for him not being here. We are clapping for a dog right now. But, yeah, thank you very much. He's, he's a purebed Pomerani Pomeranian, but he's, like, a miniature Pomeranian. And he's also got some albino in him. Sorry, dude. Sorry. I'm talking about my dog here. There's Benny, Benny also has blue eyes, as you guys have noticed, which is a complete genetic nightmare. Like, that doesn't make any sense when it comes to Pomeranians. So... Jessica, being my, my wife, loves dogs to death, and she's the one that's responsible for training Benny and making him do all the camera tricks and everything. And she wanted to be like, Benny could be a show dog. He's really cute. And that's what I said. And she's like, he actually can. I'm like, why not? He's really good looking, and he, he's real trained. He's got blue eyes. I'm like, so? Are you racist? No, <laughs> I didn't say that. He's, um, he, he essentially can't go to any tournaments or pageants or whatever for dogs because blue eyes and Pomeranians is a genetic like malfunction. And they won't accept him. Like, he has to have a certain color eyes. I'm like, well, that sucks. I'll put him on the internet then, and people are going to love him. How about that? <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, but, yeah, that's a weird little tidbit about Benny. What's up, dude? Um, I have a couple questions about, like, future things for the channel. Okay. Um, when's your next boss raid? What do you actually plan on next person be fighting in for a game? Next person I'd be a what? I mean, for your boss rage. Oh, boss rage. Ooh. So some of you guys have probably already seen it. Um, so I, I do Boss Rages live now. Like I, the first couple of them, I didn't actually do them. Um, I did them in post, and I just, I just went behind the scenes and just you know, fought a boss and went nuts. And now I found out that it's way more fun to have people behind you in a, in a Boss Rage fight live. And it's like, holy shit, you actually beat him. Like, this is so much fun. Oh, my God. Yeah, Shadow... Shadow Jago fight, we had 6,500 people watching that thing. I, live. I was like, this is insane. And then I lost my voice at the end. I was, at the end, I was like, oh, that was really fun, guys. Thank you for joining. Uh, but the next one actually has already technically happened. It happened about a couple weeks ago. And I'll, I'll, if you haven't seen it, I'll just let you know right now. Um, I'm going to do a slight deviation with the next boss rage. And it's going to be a semi-fighting semi game, semi-not. Semi and it's Asura versus Oni and Evil Ryu. And I did that on the hardest difficulty, and that thing was not easy. Um, it took me about an hour and a half to eventually get past Oni. Evil Re was like 30 minutes. He, wasn't, he, wasn't, he was kind of a pushover. Um, but the, there's no buildup in Asura's Wrath, like the DLC ending. So it was essentially like go straight to the bosses and see what I can do. Learn how to play the game like well against these bosses because it's 2D. Like it starts off like Ryu versus Evil, uh, Ryu, Evil Ryu versus Asura fight. And it's like Street Fighter 4. I'm like, okay, this is pretty freaking awesome. And then what happens during the Oni fight is honestly one of the most epic things I've ever seen, like, in, a, in, in live. Like, what I ended up doing was I was just so bummed out by this fight because I wasn't beating him at all. I started playing motivational music in the background, right? <laughs> so, like, you got the touch, um, like, Mighty Wings from Top Gun, like, stupid 80s crap. And I'm like, just feeling good about it. And then I die. I'm like, damn it. And eventually I play a, a Dragon Force song, like Mega Man Power Metal, right? I love this music. It's just I love it to death. And I start playing this song, which is a nine-minute song, right, at the beginning of my continuing fight against Oni. And over time, I get further than I've ever gotten. The music is going awkwardly well with what's going on, like, too well. And then I eventually get Oni to the part where, I mean, spoilers, I beat Oni, um, to the point where there's this huge, dramatic, like, action-oriented cutscene that's driven by my in inputs. Like, it's, it's a QTE event. Um, but you feel the QTE event. They do a good job at making you care about QTEs in that game. And the action in this sequence is going perfectly with this Dragon Force song. Like, as soon as, some, as, soon as somebody punches, the chorus comes in. I'm like, this is epic <laughs> as hell. 
like um like there's a part like for example there's a part where where Oni and uh, Oni and Asura are tackling each other, and they're in orbit, and they're flying back to Earth on fire as they're burning up through the atmosphere. Um, and the, the song says, on fire and flowing and smashing through boundaries. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> there's like, there's now, there's now 5,500 people watching this on stream. How is the music going so well with what's going on? I don't get it. I... I it was one of the most magical things I'd ever had happen on my live stream. And I'm going to do my best. And like, I don't care if I don't make any monetization on the video at all. I'll try to do my best to take that off so I can get that Dragon Force song on the video so everyone can see what happened. Because that specific thing was really cool. So I, I'll tell you right now, Oni and Evil Ryu are the next boss rage. Um, and it's Asura's Wrath. But beyond that, I'm going to do the one that I've been scared to do uh, this entire time. And I knew I eventually had to do. And it's God Rugal from CBS2. No one's happy about it. Like <laughs> everyone's like, "Oh God, I'm sorry, Max. That one, oh, on the hardest difficulty, I've never done it. Uh, I, 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 he's almost impossible on normal. So that one's we're gonna be there for a while. When that live stream starts, to let everyone know we're in for the long haul, dudes. I got my Mountain Dew, my Doritos. Let's go. <laughs> That's gonna be a fun one. But uh, thank you very much. I'm glad you like Boss Rage, dude. Oh man. <laughs> one more thing. Um, I was about to say. Is there, can you show us anything that's going on in the next season of Killer Instinct? Um, oh, Killer Instinct season two? Yeah. As the first, okay, I, I, I personally know that the first time we're going to see anything regarding it is probably E3. Like, they've actually said that a couple of times on, like, the Microsoft live stream. That, okay, E3 is, like, the day where we're probably going to, and what other day would they do it? Like, I don't think they'd show it at Evo. Um, and as soon as, I'm going to be at E3. Like, I, I get to cover fighting games at E3, which is awesome. Um... And I'm going to be covering anything else that's there between like the new Namco fighting games and stuff like that. But you got to better believe that whatever they have available for Killer Instinct, and if they let me behind the doors to maybe play something that they have, hopefully they have something playable, I'll be there. Like, so I'd say, and that's like in two weeks. I just realized that. Holy hell. So in two weeks, you might actually see like actual footage of Killer Instinct Season 2 on my channel. So stay tuned for that. So you can see TJ Combo coming in, right? I, dude, I hope so. <laughs> I, I, I personally want it to be Cinder if they show him first. Cinder? You know what? Only because so many people are saying Cinder. I, okay, on a huge, deep, personal level, I want Tusk to be the first character. Tusk, okay. like, right? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Conan, Wannabe. I just think it'd be cool just to see a barbarian fighting a robot again in a fighting game. Um, yeah, I, I, would, I would like that. But, uh, but stay tuned. I, I hope it's one of the three that we want. All right, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Ben. Hello, hello. What's up, dude? I, I I was just curious what your creepiest fan interaction has ever been. Creepiest fan interaction? I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> right now. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> uh, I was just curious. You kind of mentioned earlier about uh, you were part of the versus uh, Machinima channel. Yeah. You released a video a couple weeks ago. You're here at U of GT. You're in CEO. Yeah. A couple next month. Yeah. Um, as far as involvement with like more community oriented stuff, maybe like event recaps or any kind of like match analysis from major tournaments. Yeah. I think um, match analysis stuff would be pretty neat. I, I started doing that with Killer Instinct a little bit, uh, especially with like the top eight stuff. You know, where I was like highlighting the crazy stuff that happens in the top eight. Um, I, I have actually wanted to do some match analysis for a little while on stuff, but I didn't know if that would be interesting enough. Um, how many of you folks here, of course you guys are at a tournament, so you're like, yeah, match analysis of the final top eight would be really cool. Um, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to evaluate if that'd be interesting for everybody, because at the same time, the only reason my fighting game channel on YouTube has more than other ones is because I tried to not make it only about the tournament stuff. Like, I tried to focus on the games, because that's what I genuinely love. I love the crap out of the games. And the feeling you get when you go to something like this is the other thing I try to convey at the same time. Um, but that might not be a bad idea. Like, what, what games would you like me to see cover? Like, Ultimate Marvel 3? Yeah, like Marvel 3. I think Ultra Street Fighter 4 could be pretty interesting, because that one's coming out pretty soon. Because I'd have a bad feeling if Ultimate Marvel 3 and I did a match analysis of it, you're pretty much going to see the same thing you've seen in every top eight. Um, I love that game. I'm not going to rag on it. Uh, but Killer Instinct might be an interesting one because that game has, has, has a lot of evolution going on. Like the last few majors have been different characters winning every single major. So I think that'd be, um, I think it's a good idea. And I will probably do so at least for Ultra because Ultra is coming out and I want to get back into Ultra. So yeah, thanks, Ben. What's up, dude? Uh, I have two questions. Firstly, what do you think the next Capcom versus game is going to be since they don't have the Marvel or the Tatsunoko license? S 
So, so okay. Here's an interesting thing. Um, CVS would be what I would personally like it to be, of course. Capcom versus SNK is like like a glory matchup. When I saw that when it first came out, CVS won. It blew my mind. I'm like, this is impossible. Um, I would love there to be a CVS 3. However, I don't know if you guys seen what SNK Playmore has been doing lately. SNK Playmore, uh, over the past couple of months, released a trailer for Samurai Showdown. Uh, an um, amazing CG trailer for a Sam Show game. And I'm like, they also released one recently for another Fatal Fury game. I was like, this is ridiculously awesome. You watch this big CG fight of Hohamaru and Nakaru and everyone beating each other up. I'm like, this is, a, whoa, this is awesome. It's a pachinko game. It was a pachinko game. I was going to make a rant video, and I'm like, you know, that's not what the channel's about. It's not about ranting about stuff. I was going to go off on SNK, like, God, you can't do this to people. And it was the same thing for Fatal Fury as a pachinko game. <laughs> I don't think SNK versus Capcom is going to happen anytime soon. Like, that's, and the problem is, is because that company is doing stuff like that now. Um, and the last thing we've heard of them doing any type of fighting game, and I'll just, I'll just be real, is KOF 13. And they hardly supported it besides the PC version. I don't even know if they did the PC version, um, if they were the ones that made that port. So the, what's happening with this industry now is the likelihood of versus games and franchise versus franchise stuff is becoming less and less likely because now everyone thinks that whatever they have is worth billions of dollars. And that if you want our characters, dude, we're going to need all the money. And you just make it for free. What? No. <laughs> and Capcom's been kind of on the blunt of that for a long time, where they're the ones responsible for making the majority of the Versus games. Tatsunoko, Marvel, um, the initial Capcom versus SNK. And now it's just not working out for them. Like, I can, I can see exactly the business standpoint, because I worked, in, I worked in a business and ran. I was a producer for an online game for four years out of my life. And I was in those meetings where we had to decide where our budget was going to go. If we were going to do this deal with Disney to get these characters in our game, oh, wow, it cost $70,000 to have Mickey Mouse say something. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's avoid that. And it's like make a whole other part of our game instead. I'm like, okay. Uh, and it's, it's rough. Like what the industry has kind of come down to is that everyone values their IPs so much that something like that is very less likely to happen, which is all the more reason why Capcom needs to ignore the hell out of all these other companies and take from their 30-year legacy of making video games and just make a Capcom All-Stars game. I just, I just don't understand why you guys can't just put everything that is in all the Versus games, like all the Capcom-associated characters, and just literally put them into one fighting game. I think that would be the best thing they could do right now. And just restore the balance of like the Versus fighting series with that. Make it a 2v2 game, something like that. I know this this bummer news for like anyone that might be here, but it's like I've I've seen how this this industry has grown, and I've had the chance to like work with Disney in the past, um, especially the Marvel guys, and I know how expensive it can get, and I know Capcom right now is just like, well, we're not doing that anymore, um, so they don't restu restore the license, but hopefully they know this and they know how many people out there love the Versus series because they see how much we talk about it, you know, they they acknowledge that we know a lot of people really like Marvel. We're not going to say it's never going to happen again, but we, would, we, we can't say that it will either. Then just make a, a Capcom versus like All-Stars game. You know, I, that's, that's what I hope. Do you, do you guys kind of agree with me? Should Capcom make like an All-Stars game with just their characters and then support it for like five years? Yes. Yeah. I think that'd be great. I think the next, the next best thing we could potentially see out of a versus related game it's pretty much Tekken versus Street Fighter. Okay. Um, what, what, what Namco now chooses to do with the Tekken engine after Tekken Tag 2, which wasn't, which wasn't exactly well received uh, financially, and what they're going to do to change Tekken to try to bring it back. Because I think Street Fighter might be exactly what Tekken needs to get back into the super mainstream. So we'll see. If that's at E3, you guys will see videos and like breakdowns and interviews with all the dudes that are making that game immediately. Uh, and hopefully, crossing fingers, that, that whatever mystery fighting game Capcom is working on that's not Ultra, because they've been teasing this for a while ono's been trolling us like every other day is is hopefully capcom all-stars so okay um one other thing could i possibly get you to sign this yeah dude hit me up hit me up after the panel i'll totally sign that oh okay. my gosh thank you very much thank you sir <laughs> take care dude first of all i love samurai showdown and i yeah. just found out about that from you and i'm, I'm so sorry. mad right now I'm s don't watch the trailer don't watch I, the trailer I will, i'll I'll refrain from watching okay, the trailer. Okay, just trust me, dude. It'll just lead to like the most disappointing <laughs> feeling you felt since like since like you uh, found out Santa Claus wasn't real or something like that. That is, um, that is really unfortunate. That's but really but unfortunate. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. I uh, got into fighting games relatively late. Like, I, what I tell people is that I started with Injustice and then worked backward okay. and kind of discovered everything. Yeah. And one thing that's kind <laughs> of increasingly bugging me about certain fighting games in particular is. Uh, 
mechanics that are really just kind of bugs almost. Okay. Like what comes to mind is uh, select plinking and wave dashing. Both really bother me. Like I was watching your Dante tutorial for UMVC3. And, isn't it? Uh, one isn't of the it? Things you cover in that is here's how you wave dash. You should do this. And Dante's like, a funny character. character. Exactly, because like yeah. the ridiculous amount of stuff you have to do to make him even usable, like <laughs> right, between right. bold canceling and like wave dashing and everything. That stuff isn't easy for the casual player. Like mm. Dante is difficult to use to make him. But I agree with you. And I mean that's the thing is I think it I think that stuff like that, especially when it's just left in a game, really kind of can turn casual players away, as if the fighting game community wasn't kind of inclusive enough already. Um, so I guess my question is, when you encounter mechanics like that, is your reaction like, wow, I wish they would remove this, but I guess I have to grin and bear it? Do you kind of like that sort of thing? To be honest, if it, if it comes out of, um, if it comes from like a Japanese developer, they usually stick with their guns. Right. Uh, a lot of the time, if you don't catch something like that early in development in a fighting game, there's, there's a very little chance that it's going to get out because the core of the game kind of revolves around it. Like Dante needs bolt canceling to do everything. Like, right, like everything in the right. game now. So as a result of it, you're kind of stuck. And they, they kind of, like, design themselves into a corner. At the same time, if you grasp it, if you're the greater 5% that can do the Dante stuff of, like, the essentially the million people that bought Ultimate Marvel 3, like, it's, it's fair to say that 5% is, like, 5,000. Maybe, like, 10,000 dudes can probably do that stuff pretty consistently and be okay at it. But that's it. Like... Like, there's, there's a huge percentage of dudes that have no idea how to do that, and they just try to launch you up with Dante but find it really hard. I do agree with you that there is definitely some mechanics that come out of fighting games nowadays that seem kind of just like, well, we're just going to put it in here and see how it evolves. <laughs> and I, I, with that approach with a fighting game isn't, isn't sound. Like, f I mean, just as an example, and I hate to toot Killer Instinct's horn more, we've, we've, me and Keats, as an example, at E3 last year, found some ridiculously broken stuff. Um, with the Saber Wolf and Jago build of the game. And it came down to combos and stuff like that and how combo breakers are, and we were breaking things immediately. And guess what? At E3, they came up with a counter breaker. They're like, yeah, well, what you guys were doing was pretty busted. So they essentially came up with new things that they can put into the game to counter how we were playing the game at that point. Right. And they're like, okay, we, we need critical feedback as soon as possible because we have to make this game fast, and we have to start adding mechanics soon. So that's an example of dudes that like weren't very... like prideful about what they do and they were just like we need community feedback immediately to get something done and it happened like i don't if if you guys are following killer instinct at all the e the evo build of ki was slow like the game was super slow and combos were slow and combo breakers were way too frequent and then the next time we had a chance to play the game which was at i believe the um there was like an event at super arcade in southern california the game was way faster. The game was like 20% faster, and which is essentially what it ended up being today. So combos weren't broken all the time. You know, you didn't see combo breaker, combo breaker, combo breaker like at Evo. They were actually listening. Like, they, they did something on the fly. And that's what I mean. If you don't catch that stuff early on and you ship the game, just suddenly changing mechanics in the game becomes super hard. So I, I totally sympathize with you because it's like, well, we got to deal with this now. <laughs> I mean, if, if you really love the game, you're going you're gonna to play it regardless. But... Like, Ultimate Marvel 3 is a great example where it's just, well, this is the way it's going to be for the next 10 years. Right. Um, which is funny because it's, it's kind of like Marvel 2. It, they just evolved <laughs> from Marvel 2. Uh, but I do feel that if that stuff's caught early, they can do something about it. But if not, yeah, man. That's the nature of fighting games, right? Like, there's, there's a nature of fighting games. There will always be something that's broken. The vanilla version will always need to be patched. And there will always be top-tier characters. Right. It's never not been that. <laughs> like, that's just a universal foundry that all these things work on so hopefully hopefully they the best thing that we can hope for is that what's nice about the guys like peter at capcom now is actually bringing ultra to builds like places like this and i mean people play the hell out of it so we can see stuff like all right i don't like that <laughs> and he and he takes it out later and we see like ken was way too good like in earlier builds and they changed it and they're like let's tone him down a little bit yeah you know ex exactly things like that so i think I think that they are learning. They are learning how much the community is important to making these games really, really the best they can be when they launch. Because changing things after launch, toughest thing possible. Right. But thanks very much. That's yeah. a good suggestion. Sure. Thanks a lot. What's up, dude? Hey, Max. Um, this is kind of a more general fighting game question. Have yeah. you ever had a character crisis? And if so, do you have any advice for someone <coughs> as to how to deal with one? It's a good question because I just had a character crisis. Um, before Fulgore came out in KI, I didn't know which character I wanted to play anymore. Uh, and I, I love KI. Like, I like playing that game just in general online. 
I didn't know which of the seven characters were in the game I wanted to just enjoy. And when it came to playing online, I would just pick random because I didn't know who I wanted anymore. I had the same character crisis in Ultimate Marvel 3 where I felt like every character I was using, I was losing, and I got I to gotta pick something different because this clearly isn't working out. Um, the best thing you can do to get around that immediately is to, first off, find somebody to play with that isn't going to make you super frustrated. Like, find, like, a friend or something that you can just sit and just jam games with and just learn somebody else. Just, like, if you're playing a fireball character in Street Fighter 4, learn a charge character. Do something completely different than what you're doing. And I'd also ultimately say take a break because... A lot of the times, and even top-level players say this, like Marn, for example, ditches Marvel 3 for like three months, comes back, and he's way better at the game all of a sudden because everyone else's head grew all these situations and mind games and stuff like that. No, he's still back here. He doesn't care about that stuff. I'm going to beat your butt. That's, that's almost a mentality you kind of have to take when it comes to competitive fighting games. Um, as I felt this in competition as well, where you almost know too much, right? Like, you, you know too much of what can happen if you do something, so you're scared to do something. And that becomes a huge hindrance when you start doing tournaments and wanting to compete. And just enjoy the game in general. You're, you're afraid to play the game. And honestly, a break is the best thing you can do in that situation. Take a couple of weeks off. Try not to think about it as much. And just go in and try to have fun and do the things that work for you. And try to remain perceptive about what they're doing at the same time so you can maybe counterattack. It's, that's rough when you get to the point where you can... You're, you're afraid to play the game, but it's a natural thing with fighting games. Don't worry. Like even the top level players all have character crises and character crises, and it becomes it becomes an issue that everyone has to deal with. So don't worry about it. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem, man. Uh, hi, Max. What's up, dude? Uh, I recently watched your video about the rumored Pokémon title from yes. Namco, and you mentioned how um, Namco is kind of struggling to find a place for their Tekken franchise. Yeah. And I wholly agree with that because the, the turnout for our tournaments has been pretty bad lately. Yeah. What do you think the best way for them to kind of revitalize that franchise would be? Because I know a lot of people complain about it being too complicated or yeah. too much um, knowledge or there's stupid execution. I, I, think, I think just in general regarding that, the biggest thing that Tekken has is that the casual audience that might have bought Tekken 3, mm -hmm. Tekken 4, Tekken 5 back when the series was its most popular back in the day, Look at the new Tekken games, and they don't see anything different. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't, they see Steve, they see Brian, they see Jin, they see Heihachi just still fighting each other, and it looks the same. Like, it looks more realistic, but it, it doesn't do anything it big and new and flashy. There's no huge cinematic ultra combo like mm -hmm. Ryu got in Street Fighter 4. In comparison, there's no crazy, you know, comic booky graphics mm -hmm. like Marvel eventually got in Marvel 3. The look of Tekken and it's like kind of like rooted stability and realism and just beating you up ism is is still is still there. And that's because Harada loves that. Mm -hmm. And I'll agree, like if you if you really appreciate Tekken, that game is gorgeous. Like the transition of movement from one thing to another in that and Virtua Fighter are some of the most beautiful fighting games I've ever seen. Um, however, the casual audience doesn't see that. They just see the same thing happening since Tekken 3, and they don't care anymore. Uh, that's why I mentioned Tekken versus Street Fighter yep. might be the best thing they can do. Pokken might be the best thing they can do with that engine because if they introduce people with new characters, things are going to look drastically different as well as they can take the mechanics that they've established in the Tekken franchise and do something different later on. Uh, this is all my personal opinion, of gotcha. course. It's not what they're going to do. It's just what I would like them to do because I, there was a great period of time between Tekken 3 and Tekken 5 where I loved those games way more than Street Fighter games. Like, I love Tekken characters and everything way more than anything Capcom had to offer at the time. And it's, and it's kind of sad to see that they're not doing as well with Tekken anymore, um, even though they still have a really hardcore fan base. But I agree. I think that Pokken is a perfect opportunity to bring new people in, and Tekken versus Street Fighter might be the excellent chance for them to do something different with the Tekken series, like throw fireballs in there, make things look different than they ever have looked before, because how many, how many folks in here like genuinely like Tekken? Like, like, watch it, like to enjoy it. See, there's a lot of people, but there, there isn't a lot of people that just play it actively because it's, it's grown to a point where it's getting so technical that it's made mostly just for the hardcore people. Yeah, it's really difficult to get yeah, into. Yeah, it's, 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 it's gone way beyond where if, like, well, if I keep hitting in the low, they're going to stop blocking high so I can get the launcher. It's gone way further than that now. Um, so I'd like to see the same evolution, and hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll have videos showing that evolution if Pokken is playable. Yep. Um, but, right. yeah, I agree with you, dude. All right, well, thank you very much. No problem, man. Hey, what's up? What's up, dude? Um, a while ago, I saw a video about um, an Anarchy Rings kind of game, uh, the Arena oh, Fighter. Oh, um, Rise name. of Incarnates. Yeah, Rise of Incarnates. Yeah. And, uh, you know, from what we saw from Anarchy Rings, the game was kind of, like, bad. 
on, on this tent and didn't have like a stable community. But like we also see games like Gundam Extreme Versus. Yes. Be like very successful in Japan. Exactly. So uh, with this with this game that, that may come over here, do you think we'll see like uh, a rise of like arena fighters maybe? I think that it's Namco's opportunity to do that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what this yeah. is. Mm -hmm. It's their chance to bring this engine that is. Well, I'll just update you guys right now. Uh, Namco's been making arcade games in Japan forever, and one of their most popular ones is this Gundam Versus game. And this Gundam Versus game is extremely similar to Virtual On, but doesn't control like butt. I love Virtual On, but that game is ridiculously hard to actually make your character do really cool things. Um, and this game finally chose a way, or found a way, to make that happen. So you get these really awesome mech aerial combat games which are just, just ballistic, and it looks amazing. Yeah. And I think it's four players, right? Yeah. Like it, it's, it, yeah, it's more than yeah. just 2v2. Yeah. It, right. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and whenever I've watched videos on it, I'm like, man, this is really neat. So they're doing that now with Rise of Incarnates. And they're trying to, like, it's very obviously that they're going after, like, the League of Legends crowd. Like, yeah. they're like, we want to put it on PC. It's going to be free. It's going to be microtransactions. You can probably buy costumes and a funny hat and things like that to make money. I'm like, okay, if you want to do that, just let us play the game for free and then charge for extra BS. Because if I genuinely like the game, I'll want to give you guys money. Right. Um, and this is their like their one chance to do that. I think if Rise of Incarnates kind of sticks to its guns and does something similar to Gundam, and we can just kind of like go at it for the first time as something outside of Japan, because yeah. barely anyone outside of Japan gets to play that game unless you import the PS3 version, that could be really cool. Like no, no one here is used to that style of fighting game. Yeah, like, it took me a while to like adapt to everything. Exactly. Like, you gotta like, pay attention to like. Other, but your partner, and like. Especially you know. when you're used to like 2D and just 3D planes. Like, I'm yeah. just used to eight way running and walking back and forward, and all of a sudden you got an air dash and, <laughs> and do all this stuff, and it, it looks awesome. So, the biggest issue I have with Rise of Incarnates is the way its characters look. Okay. Like, they, they look super anarchy reigns ish, and right. I'm just waiting for them to kind of like focus on a few characters and make them have really good designs. But honestly, if, if it really comes down to the gameplay, that game could be ridiculously successful. And I, I want to play the hell out of it. I hope, I hope it's at E3 this year yeah. so I can at least see what it's like with, with an engine that's designed for non-Japanese audiences to see if they change anything, you know what I mean? So If, if we do see like, arena fighters like, become very successful, do you think we'll have like, um, in a tournament scene? Oh like no! I, well, the the, we've already scene. seen that Gundam Den work in a tournament scene, like yeah, yeah. With, with the with the extra help and effort of people that love the heck out of those versus to, uh, arena fighter games. Mm. It's possible. Like, right. I think, and to be honest, I think anything here is possible. Like three years ago, Smash Brothers was like one of the most despised things in yeah. the fighting game community. Now people go ballistic for Project M, including myself. Like it's awesome. Um, so I think that anything, anything is possible. Yeah. And w as soon as, as soon as you see things like Smash with its resurgence in the FGC, which it deserves, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna see other crazier things happen, like arena fighters. Because right now, I think the fighting game community is on like a boom. There's more people than ever paying attention to what we do. So we need to let people know that there's more than just Street Fighter and Marvel and right. the stuff that's just really mainstream and popular. So I agree with you, dude. Don't worry. Thank, thanks. Thank <laughs> What's up, dude? Not much. <clears throat> so, um, where's the rest of Nickelback? Nope. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Not I going know, there. Not going there. I know there. you're here for National Treasure. They're looking at that photograph. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, uh, what do you recommend for people who don't live in big gaming communities as far as fighting games? Like, I play Killer Instinct. And you're lucky because the online's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, how do you recommend people get better in places where there's not a strong community for it? This is why I urge online is a really important factor in fighting games. I mean, there's nothing that you can do unless you fly or travel, right? Like, and you, you can find people within community threads on SRK and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but beyond your efforts, just as a person living in like a rural area or just in general that's not close to a big city like this that has a huge you know, congregation of dudes that love fighting games, that isn't, that doesn't exist for everyone. Like, the greater majority of people that might buy fighting games don't have that resource available to them, like, I, I know. Because um, I actually try to help out dudes that want to get in to the competitive environment, and I'm like, the best thing you can do is pretty much go to SRK and look up community threads for your area. And they have, you know, community threads where people have houses and they have gatherings, and you might get lucky and find something like that. The problem is, is that that resource is not good for everybody, and that's Kind of uncommon, for the most part. What we need is online to work really well, so we can actually establish those communities without making you drive someplace. You know what I mean? And yeah. what's lucky is that Killer Instinct, if you, if you play a lot of Killer Instinct, it works really good online. And they actually now have lobbies, so we can actually have a community, finally. 
Um, and I only hope that that stuff is taken more seriously, especially by Japanese developers in the future, because a lot of times online is just shoehorned in to a lot of fighting games, you know, and it's just, and the Killer Instinct guys were like, okay, well, I talked to the dude that made the netcode on KI, like, pretty much the greatest fighting game netcode on a console for anything that's not like an old 2D game, and the dude was like, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, uh, that it's super low end and everyone can be able to play the game on. It was one dude that did it. And he's like, I just want people to be able to play from multiple distances. And he worked with like the guys that made GGPO. So it's like, there wasn't even, like there was effort, but it was just one dude that worked on that. We just need one guy, like between all these other companies, one guy to focus on the net code. And it could be good. It could be really good. So I think that, yeah, what you have isn't exactly a valid concern. And it's cool coming out to stuff like this, but you just want to play fighting games like frequently, right? Yeah. Like with people in person and have camaraderie and yeah. that's the like I I don't even go to, I don't go to the weekly tournaments like every once in a while in Southern California to win at Killer Instinct. I go there to talk with dudes. Yeah. I'm like, yay, people instead of just my computer editing and Benny. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, so I, I agree with you. I'd say check out community stuff, and um, for the sake of fighting games in the future, hope that they take online as seriously as like the KI guys did, and we get good online. I'd also say play, try playing Third Strike or Marvel vs. Capcom Origins or Darkstalkers Resurrection, because those games have the netcode of the gods. Like They're all beautiful, and if you want the similar experience, they're there. The problem is, with those games, I'm garbage. Yeah, Killer dude. Instinct's a little easier. When, did you, did you kind of jump in in the recent fighters? I think the first time I tried to play a fighter was Street Fighter 4. Okay, exactly. And a lot of a lot of dudes, when you play like an older fighting game, because Street Fighter 4 is now your fundamental base of how fighting games act and work, and a lot of folks don't see that when you go back to older fighting games, things like block stun and hit stun act totally different. Like when you take attacks and you reel back, and they just move way faster just in general. It's like, what the hell is going on <laughs> in this game? So that's a, that's a legitimate concern with a lot of people because Street Fighter 4 is now a foundation for how people judge fighting games because it brought so many people like yourself into the scene. Um, I just wish Street Fighter 4 had better netcode. Like, I really do. Like, green bars are amazing in SF4. Like, that works really good. But if you do like an East Coast to West Coast, it's it, it's it's not the best. Like you kind of don't want to want to avoid that. But uh, best of luck finding anybody like around your area, and best of luck with Killer Instinct, man. That that game's fun online. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks. What's up, man? If you were a fighting game character in a game, like someone made a fighting game character out of you, uh, okay. what kind of character would you be? Would you be a charge? Would you be like a Shoto? What would you be? I'd be like Sean from Third Strike. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I would take all the moves he has, like the, the screaming, because Sean is ridiculously hype in Third Strike. He, like, loves everything he does in that game. Um, I like just the way he moves and acts, even though he's not very good. I think that his... The thing that attracts me the most to Sean is his personality, is, like, how he, how he emotes in the game. And I... Yeah, I, I'd pretty much be a Sean from Third Strike. Like, if Benny gets put into into Beast Fury and that actually happens, I'm, I want Benny to play like Sean, like a little bit from Third Strike. Right. But and yeah. then one last thing, um, I know you kind of hit us a little bit on the video, I think already. Yeah. Um, Google buying Twitch, good, yeah. bad, and why? Um, I think it's great for Twitch, of course. Uh, there's been recent interesting stuff with YouTube. I mean, YouTube had a thing recently where subscription boxes just stopped working for a lot of people, and I, I suddenly thought, like, wow, nobody cares about my videos anymore. Like, and this was like a week ago. I'm like, what? Wow, that sucks. I gotta, I'm going to stop doing this. <laughs> uh, there's been some weird things that have gone on with YouTube. I only hope that uh, in combination of this stuff, it fixes some of the issues that are already on YouTube. And it allows us to do the same things we're already doing on Twitch. Because right now, Twitch is in a really good spot. Like, they just changed their, more on a technical level, their encoding rate, how videos are encoded and how they process the video on screen, which made things like the extra 30, 30 second delay between the streamer and the thing, and running at 60 frames can be kind of hard in certain browsers. Um, I only hope it fixes stuff like that. And I hope this paves the way for YouTube to eventually get 60 frame per second videos. I would love that. Like, I will, I will spend all the extra time rendering every single fighting game video I have in 60 frames per second so people can enjoy what the game actually looks like instead of what half the game looks like. Just a quality thing I have on my end. Uh, but I, I, I'm kind of neutral on the whole thing otherwise because it's Google. And if they make you sign into your Google Plus account to go into Twitch, I don't know about that, guys. <laughs> can, we not, can we just ignore that that exists for a little while? Uh, but I think it, it's, it's good for them in general because... 
right now, I think Twitch kind of deserves it because they've established a community that didn't exist at all. Like, streaming wasn't a thing at all for games specifically before Twitch. And, um, yeah, I'm just waiting for it to happen. Like, we're not going to see anything for a couple of years, I think. So until then, I'm going to kind of leave myself open to what is a possibility. Could be really cool, or we'll take it as it comes. All right, thanks. No problem, man. What's up, dude? Hey, uh, I have a question. Uh, is there any chance that you might have, like, a co-op with uh, the Zaibatsu? <laughs> I looked at your shirt and I was yeah. like, I know what this question is going to be. Um, <laughs> yes, um, me and Matt have me and Matt have actually been talking frequently um, about stuff that we would like to work on, mm -hmm. and he wanted to do something specifically with Zach and Benny. Yeah. So I I'm going to come up with something. And I, we've already come up with something that we're going to do. Um, we want to make that happen, like the two hype animals on YouTube, yeah. to like make them go at it with something. Uh, and yeah, like I th it's funny because I feel that two best friends play and the Zaibatsu and crew mm -hmm. are essentially like represent the same thing I do. Except my stuff directly focuses on fighting games in general, and they focus on fighting games in general games at the same time. And we have this like somewhat camaraderie because those guys are they love the exact same type of stuff I do. And there's not many other dudes on YouTube that are like that. Like there's not many other guys that just genuinely love the crap out of this game and can show it. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely be working on stuff in the future. And the, the best thing I can hope is that we run into each other eventually because we are, like, the furthest distance from the West Coast to the East Coast, like, possible. And uh, they do go to events sometimes. So, yeah, there, there will be something in the future. Because I'll, I'll be honest. I'm one of the people who go onto your streams and say, you need to contact Wooly. You right need to get really Wooly on deep here. Into like, the where's, Wooly hole. where's Wooly? The, the craziest <laughs> thing is that that one night we were doing the Shadow Jago fight, Wooly actually subscribed to the channel. Like, that was ridiculous. I'm like, no. That's not true. And then seven other dudes with, like, I'm the real Wooly, <laughs> like, subscribe. I'm like, I don't know what's going on anymore. That's perfect. <laughs> but, yeah. Right. Uh, well, hopefully in, the, hopefully in the future. All right. Thank you. No problem. What's up, dude? Nice shirt. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> but in terms of characters, I know you're getting into Smash and you're getting into Ultra Street Fighter. Yeah. Uh, main for Smash and main for Street Fighter. So Ike was just announced for Smash. <laughs> yeah, right um, there. Like, and his, his design is just straight up boss like they they evolved him like the character evolved in the fire emblem games and i don't i don't even play the fire emblem games but i just follow some of the character designs because they look cool he looks really cool um <laughs> but in for smash in general i i absolutely want to play ike i absolutely want to play mega man and um definitely uh definitely the new punch out guy as well I little remember his, my, yeah little mac i forgot his name all of a sudden <laughs> Um, yeah, Little Mac's ground game looks ridiculously interesting for what Smash is, and that's kind of like changing the entire like game in a way. If he's super unpowerful in the air, but super crazy on the ground, yeah. I'm like, this guy's gonna be super bad or the best character in the game, like yeah. one or the other, and there's nothing in between. Uh, but I'm still hoping that there's still a couple characters on the horizon. Even, even there's a video I think that might have gone live today that I didn't make last night that I made a little while ago to go up today, that explains and goes into detail with a little bit of evidence that I think Zero Suit Samus is the clone prototype for Bayonetta. Yeah, exactly. We were talking about yeah, she's friend. She's got a lot of really weird looking moves that she might not have had before that put her arms in certain positions where it's like she should have two guns. And for some reason her hand is just extra and it's not doing some cool hand thing like your comic book hand. It's going like this. And I'm like that's a gun, but there's no gun in her hand. And then they added the boots on top of her too. Yeah. So I'm like, there's just too much convenience. And Sakurai was seen in the Platinum offices like six months ago, and no one knew why he was in there. So there's something uh, that I would like. Hopefully at E3 we'll find out exactly. But right now, as far as who exists, uh, Mega Man, Ike, and Little Mac. There you go. And for Ultra Street Fighter. Oh, Ultra. Um, the first character that I definitely want to learn is Elena. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of fun just playing as Elena in Third Strike. And I didn't learn her in, in Cross Tekken yeah. um, for whatever reason. And now I think that her character actually looks fun, and I want to play a different character than a Shoto. You know, I, I really want to have something different that I can be decent with in that game, other than like a Ken or a Ryu or a Sagat. So Elaine is going to be that character, and I've seen that she can like multi-hit confirm her crouching light or her standing light kicks and stuff like that into uppercuts, and she's got decent Oki. And I'm like, okay, this could be fun. And healing looks ridiculously broken. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll give her a shot. And I think Justin. Didn't Justin win the Ultra Tournament with Elena here? I don't remember. Did that not happen yet? 
Or Sunday. Okay, so far he's using Elena, and he made it in a top eight with her. So I'm sticking around for that. Like, I'll steal go. everything Justin's doing. Just, <laughs> just look at what he's doing and copy it when she comes out. And um, other than that, there's... I'll tell you guys right now. There's one other character that I want to start playing, and it's everyone else is going to start playing him, and it's Evil Ryu. However, my reasons for playing Evil Ryu are going to be completely different than everyone else because they want to win money. <laughs> and <laughs> Evil Ryu is going to be very good. There was a um, a mod I recently saw in the PC version. It was the Asura's Wrath one, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, after playing Asura's Wrath, that that secretly became one of my favorite games like of the last generation. I think Asura is just such a cool character. There is the most perfect mod on the PC version of SSF4 that makes him look like Asura and sound like Asura. I'm like, yep, I have to do this. There's just nothing I can do yeah. to avoid this. So when that game eventually drops on PC, I'll just mod his skin. No one else will see me with the skin, but the people that are watching will see me. And I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play him just for that. Like, that's all the motivation I needed. <laughs> Thank you. No problem, man. What's up, dude? Uh, not much, dude. Uh, so coming from the NetherRealm Studios yeah. the side of the gaming con uh, competitive scene, uh, an MK10 com or whatever next the uh, it's MK10 we'll just say yeah, it right now it's like shh, okay. <laughs> it's totally MK10 <laughs> uh, coming seeing the progression from MK9 into Injustice yeah. and seeing how much better it got you know or whatever they did to change it what do you think you would want to see and would you be get want to get into the next MK game oh depending on what god yes okay so the the bigger issue is that I had a personal stigma against Mortal Kombat for whatever reason back when MK9 came out mostly because the previous Mortal Kombat games hadn't screamed like the highest quality as far as a competitive environment right. and I was at the time I was still biased because I like Street Fighter and you either like Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat or nothing like yeah. <laughs> and I, I threw that away just because it's pointless and I started playing Injustice for the reason that I want to get into one of these games, and I found that Injustice was just so much more polished version of like what right. Mortal Kombat 9 was trying to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if they take this type of this type of style and they just just improve upon it, and don't make you know certain things like the screen go so far out when characters walk back and compress right. the action and kind of return Mortal Kombat to its roots like they did with MK9, that's exactly I think what would be really good. I don't think NetherRealm doesn't need to do anything, which is funny. Like NetherRealm doesn't have to do anything because those games sell more than Capcom games, way more than people even realize. Like, they're extremely popular, especially right. MK9. So Injustice, Injustice, with its popularity, we're also going to see potentially Injustice 2. Yeah, like, yeah. that's also a thing that's happening now. Um, there's there's going to be MK10, and I'm more excited for MK10 than Injustice 2 because I like the Mortal Kombat characters right. more than the DC characters. want to see how it progresses. Exactly. I want to see what they do to Ermac now. I want to see what they do to Smoke now, you know, and everything like that. I only hope that they try to make the game more snappy. And by snappy, I don't mean like a buzzword. I mean to have when you press a button, it reacts faster. Right. It feels more like a classic 2D like fighting game because the biggest problem with Injustice and MK is that the game feels... I hate to say this, but laggy. It feels like the game's inputs take longer to get to the screen than when you press a button. Like, the characters either some more animations or something, and I would prefer a much more snappy, like, feeling experience. I think the game feel is the thing they should definitely go for, and the netcode. <laughs> like, NetherRealm needs to stop, like, with that kind of whatever online infrastructure they have, because they put in the best modes you've had ever for, like, fighting games. Like, they just put in so much stuff for people to do stuff with, but the foundation it's built on is just frustrating because it's it's really bad from distance. Um, so yeah, that's my biggest hope: improved netcode for MK10 and to have it feel a little bit better, like more snappy as far as a fighting game. And just one more thing: uh, Will you, whenever this game is released or anything, would you be willing to stream Chainsaw Incident? Oh yeah, that game looks so interesting. Yeah, the, the Chainsaw Incident guys. <laughs> I, don't, I think they recently had to take down their Kickstarter and they're gonna like revamp it. But yeah, like I've even uh, they've contacted me for like help with making a video. And I I went before I even knew about the game. Like this game looks really cool, and I was planning on making a video. Yeah. And then I talked to them, and they were talking about the stuff they have planned for the game. I'm like, okay, this is really cool. I'll, I'll make I'll make a video about it for you guys because I was already gonna do that. Yeah. And if it does come out eventually, yeah, like. They just need to figure out what the game is still because I think yeah. everything we've seen is just like a pre-rendered trailer. Like yeah. it's just composed as an example of what the game is going to end up being. So until it's actually a game and we get to play it and then we can start evaluating like what's going right. on and then I'll start covering it heavily. But yeah. All right. Thanks, dude. No problem, dude. So we'll take, we'll take two more and then we'll wrap this guys up. I'll let you guys go. <laughs> hey, Max. What's up, dude? 
Hey, uh, I'm just wondering if you have any tips for someone that's like just starting out on Twitch. Um, just starting out on Twitch. <laughs> I, I, I should, but I feel like I just started out on Twitch myself. Um, let's see. If if you're just starting out on Twitch, and this is just my general advice, kind of for every stream. I I make my stream based around what I would like to see somebody streaming. Like and the same thing for most of my video content. Like I make videos around the things that I would love to watch videos about. And when it came to streaming, the most entertaining streamers are the people that put a ton of effort into what they're doing at the time. Like they they genuinely care about the game they're playing. They engage in conversations. They talk a lot. They're presenting. Like they're actually like you know they're they're speaking clearly and they're focused on making the experience for everyone watching really good. I think that's the most important part. Um, after every single live stream I do, I'm exhausted. Like I'm just like oh I'm so tired. My voice is like dead. But it's worth it because that's what I would like to see. I'd like to see somebody be excited for what they're doing instead of just like I'm not calling anybody out because the majority of dudes on on Twitch just play games. And they expect you just to, you're, you're there just to watch the, them be really good at the game. And for me, that's never been my, my shtick. Like, I always acknowledge I am not the best at these games, but I love the hell out of them. So I'm going to play them and we're going to enjoy them together. And if you have that mentality and you try to focus around it being as good for them as it is for you, like you have to genuinely like what you're doing too, people will watch. People will come around and tune in. And I feel that's the only reason I've gotten as many followers as I have on Twitch right now is because I, I care. Like I want it to be as fun for them as it is for me. So that's my little bit of advice. It's a long answer, but. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, man. What's up, dude? What's going on, man? Big fan. Oh, uh, thank you. Two quick questions for you. The first, are you going to be bringing back Soul Calibur 2 or 5 to the channel? Uh, 2, absolutely not, because the <laughs> deck code. Like, just, I'll just say it right now. Like, that, that really burned me, because I love SC2. Uh, and in my opinion, it's the best Soul Calibur there is. So I don't have some, some, some apathetic, like, spite towards Namco regarding it. I just don't want to cover the game anymore. But Soul Calibur 5, I've been waiting for a moment to jump back into that game and get people online. I just have to relearn how to play it. Because my, my brain is still accustomed to SC1 or 2 yeah. with the way that game works. And I have to, like, just defense cost meter. Or not just defense, uh, like, guard, like, parrying cost meter. I got to remember how to do this. So I got to jump back in for it for a couple hours and relearn how to play the game. And you probably expect me not to play a majority of characters. <laughs> like, when it comes to Soul Calibur games, I pretty much stuck with Mitsurugi and Siegfried the entire time. And that'll be about it. But um, between all the games that I get requests for, Blaze Blue. And Soul Calibur, going back to Soul Calibur, is the two like biggest ones. And even recently, it's not a bad idea because I think Soul Calibur Five was on sale for like five dollars, yeah. like five bucks for that game. I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, what age are we living in where things are so cheap nowadays? Like that Soul Calibur One came out, and I paid like sixty dollars for that thing, and it was like an arcade mode and a little bit else. So, um, yeah, I think Soul Calibur Five, as far as the evolution of the Soul series, is really good. Even though they made that game really fast, it's fun. And I'd like to get back into it eventually, especially because it's got good online. Yeah. And my last question would be, one of the things I liked most when I was playing Injustice and Mortal Kombat from NetherRealm Studios is yeah. that they had a very well-fleshed-out story mode. Yeah. More so than Street Fighter, which has a lore and a story, but it's hardly ever emphasized, and Marvel kind of does its own thing. Yeah. How important do you think it is for fighting games to have a fully fleshed out story with lore or character bios? I think it's important, um, not for the fighting game in general, for like the combat system in the game, they're how good the game is, not that important. However, what it's important for is to get the games into the hands of people. The issue is with fighting games is that if people don't see that it's just an amazing fighting game and has characters you like, if it doesn't have something to keep them into like a single player mode, which the majority of people like, then they don't, they don't play it. Um, and the reason Injustice and Mortal Kombat have been so popular and sell so well is because, yeah, they have fully fleshed out story modes that aren't single character focused, that like span the entire roster of good guys or bad guys and stuff like that. Um, and that's important to get the game into the hands of people. Because once you get the game into the hands of people, all we need to do is have them pay attention at one point, right? And then once they're paying attention, then somebody can come along and make them realize, oh, there's like competitive elements to these games. There's like tournaments that go on. Like, that's not gonna happen unless people are playing the game already. So to make stuff like this bigger, yeah, I think story modes are actually very important um, when it comes to introducing new players. Because once they have the game, they ba understand the basics, then maybe they wanna look up a tutorial about how to get better. Maybe they wanna have a little bit more understanding that 
wow, why is Superman, why is everyone complaining about Superman right now? I'll watch that Evo video, you know, or, or see what the heck is going on regarding this. And, whoa, Batgirl seems really good. I'm going to watch a tutorial about that. They're, they're getting into the fighting game community. You know, they're getting into this huge congregation of dudes that love watching fighting games and, and enjoying the interaction of them. So I think that's really important. And if, they, if Capcom were to do something like that, like, say, Street Fighter V rolls around, if SF5 rolls around, I'd love them to put in a story mode like Asura's Wrath. Because Asura's Wrath, I don't think, deserved to be like a $60 game. It's a fantastically fun game. However, it has the perfect cement foundry for what a fighting game should be if like Asura was a Ryu and he was on his quest or something like that. Like Things that aren't exactly super fighting game mechanics. You don't have to do half circle back, quarter circle up forward, up forward, FADC fireball. Don't make somebody do that. Make them press a quick time event. You know, in the story mode. Make them have fun with the character because maybe they'll be intrigued enough to do that cool stuff that Ryu's doing in that QTE actually in a match. Yeah. So that, that's, that's the gap that I personally try to fill that you might think see all these people doing cool stuff, but if we can get you to, to realize that you can do that too, it's the best thing we can do for these types of games. So, thank you. No problem, man. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you for sitting through this entire thing. I think we might have another panel in about 30 minutes or so. And I actually have to go play, yeah, in about 30 minutes, the second panel is coming up, and I have to go play Killer Instinct. But for anyone that actually took the time to come here and listen to my spiels, thank you guys a ton. Um, seriously, where the channel's at right now, and where I'm at on Twitch, and what I've been doing, I'm like the happiest I've ever been. So thank you guys a ton, and I'll see you next time. Peace, dudes. <laughs>